because last time, uh, oh, hi, right. last time they were complaining that, uh, that we didn't. Right. And they should be able to see and hear us all these important when you're doing a show. Yep. They can, they, you want them to be able to see and hear you is the, uh, that's the important thing. The way that works. And I all can right. tweet it out. Like you said. Ah, yes. Tweet it out. Look at Hattie's new angle. A new angle. New angle. Yeah, new camera. Well, it's the same camera, but I'm excited. I have a lot to talk about today. I'm very, very excited. Yep. Big week next week. Woo! A lot Big of things next week. week. A lot of things. And did you? Were you able to successfully find out what time the Apple? I uh, literally just clicked watch the links to find event. It out. The time for that oh, don't is show me an ad. You, I no, I, I'm, I've already got it because you're struggling with the ads. I've already I already got it, it too. Well, what is it? 10 a.m. Pacific. Pacific. So noon here. Noon. We usually do a, a barbecue lunch. Yeah, when we have someone to go and pick it up. <laughs> so uh, is it going to be? Is it going to be streamed? These are things we don't know. These are things we don't know. So uh, is it? Fine. Is it going to be live? So far, I do not see that it's the says chat. Live. Is chat? Did you tweet the show? I tweeted the show. Awesome. So eventually someone will show. Are you in both of the chat rooms? Yeah, I am. Is Gosh. anyone in there talking? Because it's late on a Friday. I know. You know, a lot of people, well, I'll say that for the show. Greg note. Manley says, yes, Apple event will be streamed. Okay. Make a little, uh, little note here. Some questions. All right. Greg Manley. And you have your things. Oh, you have my, have I got my, my Skype, things. Skype, Skype I got my things. things are here and ready. They, both both guests are ready. Both guests are ready. Well, they're early. Good. All right. And we don't even know what day it is. It is. Okay. I'm ready. You ready, Hattie? You feel I good. am ready. You feel yes, good. and I have my water. You've got okay. your tea. I, well, it's for what it's worth. It's not really tea. It's decaf. Oh, right. So the did you see, do you see the ink that just came out of this pen? It's now part of the desk. You see that? Your Sharpie? No, I, I was never given the Sharpie. Oh, that pen. I was never given my Sharpie. I don't know where the Sharpie is. Took it on the trip and it disappeared. No, All right. Gave it to you. I am ready to, uh, to start a show. And of course we can't. The key, shortcut key to the markers is not set. <laughs> not set because someone changed it? Yeah, someone came in here and changed it. <laughs> Look at the mess this pen is making. Look at that. Just wanted a Sharpie and yeah. was told I couldn't couldn't have my own Sharpie. I gave it back to you during the trip. Right. Okay. This is the Dan Benjamin Hour for Friday, March 6, 2015. Coming to you live and direct from Austin, Texas, the capital of Texas, where it is a cold, crisp, bright day. Good to be back here, Hattie. I was uh I was just in in, in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was there at the Startup Riot, which is the thing that uh, my friend Sanjay puts on once a year, usually. And uh, it was it was a good time. Basically, this is a this is a place where it's it's kind of Atlanta focused, but the people, the good people in Atlanta, come together, and uh, and 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 they they talk about things. They talk about starting a business and they have people who are in startups or starting startups or who need, they maybe need help at advising, mentoring, or just money. Right. Connections. They come together into, into this beautiful space. What was the name, Hattie? What was the name of that space? Uh, I think it was Terminal West. Terminal West. We need one of those in Austin. We were, I was talking to the guy who runs it and I said, well, you gotta, and you the art come center too, the King Plow Arts so Center. Awesome. That was so awesome. Oh man. There. So anyway, for some reason, they wanted me to come and talk. And I think before, uh, before we left on, on uh, Tuesday, on Monday's show, I said I was going to go down there. I was going to drop a bomb on Atlanta. And I think you did. I think I did. I really think I did. I think you inspired a lot of people. And uh, so many things I talked about that I've talked about, like on the Grit Show. But I wanted to make sure that, you know, that I inspired them. And, and, and so I, I, had a great, I had a great opening line. It was the only good good part of my talk was the first thirty seconds. Really? That's what I think. Do you do you disagree? The rest of your talk was awesome too. Well, thank you for saying that. Of course, you're. I pay you. That's true. So I do so have to say that. You know the right thing mm -hmm. to say. <laughs> but I. Uh, so here's how I started it out. I said, you know, uh, Sanjay asked me to come here and speak to you guys, 
And uh, he said he wanted me to inspire you, but the only way that I'm old fashioned, mm -hmm. right? I'm old fashioned. The only way I know how to inspire people is through uh, criticism and fear. And I didn't think I could do that from up here on the stage. Got a big laugh, they felt like good, that, yeah. and the rest of it was just BS. <laughs> but I think, it, you know, I think I fooled him. So if you want me to come and speak to you. <laughs> if you want to be fooled. <laughs> right. If you, want, if you want me to come out there and speak to you guys, uh, danbenjamin.com. And I'll come out and I'll give a talk. And honestly, for what it's worth, uh, I, I had a great time up there. So thanks to, uh, to Sanjay and the Star Bride folks for, uh, for inviting me and for paying uh, for the limo. Even though they don't know, you know, Sanjay doesn't know that. Yet. No idea. He's no. no idea. Uh, we, we, uh, we waited because here in Austin, it's usually the, I wish you could see outside today. It's crisp, beautiful. bright, beautiful day here Blue in Austin. Skies. Blue skies. And, uh, just. It is cold though. It's it cold is. Outside. It is cold. Yeah. But it's a beautiful day here. And, uh, gosh, I'll tell you what. Never expect that kind of fog that we had on Tuesday. <laughs> I don't even think you could see a car length in front of no you. No flights in and out. Mm -mm. It just stopped. Uh, the airport was just dead. And uh, and we had uh, no flights, obviously, in or out for, for hours at a time. And our flight eventually, we, we waited a, a lovely eight hours in the airport. It was so fun. Yeah, eight hours in the <laughs> airport. Anyway, um, that it finally got there. And uh, wonderful, wonderful thing. So thanks again. I know I keep thanking them, but it, you know, I don't have a lot of opportunities. I'm not invited to speak a lot. So when I am, I'm really, I, get, I like it. And uh, so it was great. It was a good time. I met a lot of great people out there, a lot of really exciting startups out there. And then I, be, I realized it was a judge. I actually had to judge. Uh, it was supposed to be 30, but they had one drop out. 29 startups. I was supposed to, I was actually judging these, uh, these people. I, I was responsible. You played the for, role of uh, Mark Cuban on Shark Tank. Right. It was very Shark Tank. It was very much like a Shark Tank. And I, uh, I, I sat up there with one of two other judges, and we were on a little. We had a little, little love seat, and then the, the the start would come up, and they would pitch their idea for three minutes, three minutes, and then the lights would yep. go dark. Their mic would get shut off, and then it was my turn with the other judge to to talk to them for three minutes and ask them questions for three minutes, mm -hmm. and uh, and at the end the end of it. We then had to pick our top five collectively as a group of three judges, our top five. And then the audience picked the best three of those one, two, three order. And uh, what did you, what did you think? Who won, who, who, who won it, Hattie? Who won the, uh, uh, I believe the one that won it was South. The food one. South, yeah. South, South side food. Something. It was a food. It was food. They go, they get the little, little gourmet lunch. They bring it to you. It was great. It was a great right. idea. Good the implementation. The menu sent to you in the morning. You choose from the few items that they have and then they bring it to you when at your lunchtime and it saves you from getting in a fight with other people at work or choosing a place to Look go. Look at Hattie's new shot. Whatever. I got to say, if yeah, you're watching, if yeah, you're watching yeah. the video of this, we've got, Hattie, we have your shot. <laughs> Perfect now. Yeah, I like this. It's nice. Look at that shot. So if you if I you want to tune hide. in live, oh well, you got a cable, yeah. Um, if you want to watch the show live, we'd love for you to do it. We'd love for you to do it because I'm an I'm an old fashioned radio kind of person. I love radio. I love talk radio. And one of the things that I do with as many of the shows as I can, and certainly with this show, it's it, you might call it time shifted radio, right? It's a podcast. You can watch it, or listen to it anytime you want. And the, I've I, again, the criticism I've gotten about the video on the show is so useful to me because I want to make it better. But one thing I want to be clear about is that, like, this is a behind the scenes right. video. What we're 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 not ESPN. We're not doing like a, a broadcast. Where you're speaking where, to the viewer. Yeah, in I a mean, way. this is like, behind the scenes. Yeah. You want to see how we make the best show in the world. You can tune in and watch it live, and then you can get the video on on uh, on YouTube. And you can see the stuff that we're talking about, looking at. You see how it's made, because it, you know there's a, only uh, this. This is the best show ever. You yep. you know the only way to be part of it for you because we don't have like a studio audience yet. Nope. But, but we're we'll, building. We'll we're building. That. Well, in the new facility, we're going to have room for for uh, five hundred <laughs> people to come and watch a show each day. Five hundred. What did we say? Four. Uh, I think we did a little anyway, less than that. Well, we'll see. But in the new facility, we'll have the opportunity for everyone to come in and, and watch. But we're always trying to make incremental improvements. So keep the feedback coming. If you're supporting the show on, on Patreon, uh, I would like to profess my undying love to you. I, I do love you, uh, each and every each and every one of you, in, a, in an intimate way, in the most intimate well, of ways. Go. And uh, you can support the show by going to patreon.com slash 
five by five. Give us whatever you feel is fair. And uh, now, as they say in, in show business, Hattie, I know you're new to show business. I am new to it. Uh, on with the show, they say. Bugs Bunny good used riddance. to say that. And good riddance. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the story about how I, I said good riddance to my grandparents? No. After I had stayed with them for a week and they took me to Disney. Let me tell you, let me tell <laughs> you the story. were very kind and loving. Let me tell you the story. Before I do that, let me tell you a little bit about Meta CDN. It, are you watching live? Are you watching live? I know you are. I hope you, you are. Yeah, I hope you are. And the reason why is right here, Meta CDN. They have the fat. They, okay, so here's how it works. I've got the, the streaming machine right here. And, and it's taking the video from our, our three, four video cameras. When we have remote guests, we might take their video and grab it, send it out. All of that stuff. We send it out up to Meta CDN. That's where it goes. They have got the streaming stuff down. If you watch the show on video, dbm. Uh, dbh.fm, you go there and you can watch this behind the scenes video. You can see me, you can see Hattie, you can see the studio, get the studio camera off right now. Because we're trying to figure out our shot. That one? I mean, it's not turned off. I'm just not going to, I'm not going to hit that camera. Ah. Because it's not a good shot right now. We got to figure out how to do this room. Hattie and I are in the same room. She's right here. Hold on. We'll go to, we'll do Hattie's shot. No, come, come. No, you're too far. You got to see my hand going. Right there. Keep going. There. There. Okay, we just we just sort of <laughs> high fived each other. I kind of. We are in the same. We are in the same room. Yes. Uh, but we can't show that. We got to get a better video angle. Anyway, we send all our video up to Meta CDN, and they stream it out to you guys. And you guys, I want you to kill their servers. Five p.m. It's going to be starting next week, Addy. Monday uh, yeah. through Friday, or maybe Thursday. We'll talk about that on the show. What do you mean, maybe all, Thursday? You'll, I mean, maybe maybe Friday, maybe not. Um, oh. but next week the segments begin. We've had just, this has just been yeah. playtime up until now. We've just been experimenting, getting all this ready Monday through Friday is the real deal. Okay. And we're going to have the segments. We're going to have the, sh the, the guests in a certain line. Mm -hmm. We're going to have the calls ready. We're going to have all this stuff set up next week is the real. This has been the, what right. we, what they Five call the episodes, soft, the soft launch, soft launch. Uh, this is, has been our pilot pilot five week. episodes, yeah. right? Pilot week, pilot week. Pilot week is over. Pilot two weeks. Pilot two weeks is over. Next week, Pilot Monday, is, is legit. And we're doing a special. We're going to be recording at a different time than we usually record. Uh, instead, we're, we're going to be doing it uh, around the Apple event time. So stay tuned to me on Twitter, Dan Benjamin. There's also uh, Dan Benjamin Hour is the new Twitter account. And, uh, and so we're going to be doing something very special for the event on Monday. We finally have a show to do it, it won't be a five by five special. We might, you know, I might shunt it into the stream, into the five by five stream, uh -huh. uh, and and release it there too. I've got a brand new DBH website coming out that should be. <gasps> it's looking so good. Why? Thank you. <laughs> really good. Yeah, the site looks good too, uh, and all of this we're going to have an integrated Meta CDN because they let you embed their their player and everything else right in there. Meta CDN. So you go to metacdncom slash five by five. That's where you want to go to learn more about this. Uh, but uh, you can engage with your, your uh, viewers in real time. The super low latency streaming. That's the thing that was important to me is you're seeing this is almost seconds after it happens. There's almost no delay. Most of the other streaming services have a huge delay. And uh, video on demand hosting. You can serve pre-recorded videos through their CDN with no buffering. They've got a full-blown CDN for, for everything. And I mean, just go check it out. Meta, Metacdn.com slash 5x5. Love them and love how they're supporting, uh, for supporting this show. With no proof. I didn't even come to them with any real numbers. I just showed up and said, listen, I want you to do this show. And they said, we love it. We're they believed We're in it. In. They believe in me. Finally, somebody believes in my dream. So what did I say I was going to tell? Oh, the story. Okay, so here's what happened. My grandparents uh, invited me and my mom uh, because my mom was already divorced by them. So they said, come, come visit us in South Florida. They lived in Boca. Where else do they live? Boca. That's where you live in if you're retired Jewish people in Boca. That's where you go. Yep. In Florida, you go to Boca. So they said, come and stay with us here. And then uh, we were there, and I, after a couple days there, they come out and they're like, how would you like, I think I was seven years old, <laughs> how would you like to go to Disney World, to Walt Disney World? And the I said, the place you would later work. Yes. A little foreshadowing, perhaps. Uh -huh. And I said, I would love to go there. So they drove, we drove up to Orlando, hung out at Disney for a few days, drove back. I mean, they pulled out all the stops. This was an amazing trip for me. It changed my life, this trip. 
And at the end, I'm walking out. And, you know, whenever I, I was a huge uh, fan of Bugs Bunny, I'm watching Bugs Bunny on a, on a daily basis, as they say. Love that show, all Me the too. Bugs Bunny said. And at the end of, uh, of sometimes when uh, Bugs Bunny would leave or someone would leave, he would say, good riddance. And it always got a laugh, you know? He, I always got a bit of a I laugh. I feel like he taught kids how to be sarcastic in a way. And I thought good riddance was just something funny you say when you, when like, you leave ha, somewhere. Good riddance. Good riddance. Like, I didn't I heard the word rid. And you didn't. And know. I thought that means, like, leaving. You know, right, I, I was a kid. Yeah. And uh, so we'd stayed there. They'd done all this amazing stuff for us. And then I, I, I'm, well, I'm leaving. I say, okay, good, you know, well, good riddance. And this did not, let me just say, it did not go over very well at all. <laughs> they didn't appreciate After your the week newfound and the hun- humor. hundreds, and if not thousands of dollars spent on Disney and the plane tickets and everything else, having your seven-year-old grandchild, as they're leaving in the hallway of your condo, good riddance. <laughs> it didn't, didn't work well. It didn't work well for me. It hasn't worked well since. Well. HBO is in talks with Apple. Have you heard about this, Hattie? Have you heard about this in the news? HBO is in talks with Apple to be the launch partner for this new HBO Now web service. I'm extremely excited about Yeah, this. basically <laughs> what we've been talking about for a very, 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 very long time is let's cut our cords yep. and get rid, dump, dump cable. And all we really want is HBO. That's the reason I have cable. Is for, is for like Game of is Thrones for and stuff like HBO. that. Yeah. No, I hear that. And uh, so in April, they have this new service called HBO Now, which they're going to be launching in conjunction with, uh, they've got their streaming partner of MLB, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. And in April, in conjunction with the premiere of the fifth season of Game of Thrones, Mm -hmm. a show you may be familiar with, Hattie. I'm quite familiar with it. What's the blonde on there? The blonde one. Is that? No, the blonde one. uh, Oh, she's got the dragon. Daenerys Targaryen. You remind me of her when you get upset. Yeah. And uh, anyway, it's going to launch. You're going to be able to go and, and subscribe directly to, to this thing. So you don't have to have cable. You don't have to have HBO Go. You just get this, and it's going to be like 15 bucks ordered right from, uh, from uh, HBO itself. That seems like it's more along the lines of a Netflix kind of thing, where Netflix is not really tied to any cable provider Correct. at all. It's just exactly. this is a service where you go and get TV shows and movies, HBO now is what it's called yeah that seems to be what they're doing and so I how do you so get smart patty how do you get this out to those people the way that you get it to those people is you make a partnership with the apple tv with roku or with, uh, with xbox mm-hmm. or amazon or one of these other ones because they're right now the number I'm, I'm reading here is 10 million u.s broadband subscribers who do not pay for a cable tv bundle so you want to reach them but you there's also 70 million cable tv subscribers you and i had are among them uh, who do not subscribe to hbo but might if you could subscribe online. Well, actually, I think we both do subscribe to HBO, don't we? Yes, we do. So this is the this is a big deal. Um, but then there's also companies like Cablevision and Cox. <laughs> sorry, no offense. I know. No offense. Uh, who are who are there saying, <laughs> you know what, we want to bundle this with uh with our uh, our existing thing for people who don't have cable, but like you you've got cable modem. Oh, that's We will include this service with, with the cable modem so you still don't have to get it. it's an internet thing. That's right. It's an uh-huh. internet thing. Internet thing. Title. Where do I submit a title, Dan? Oh, uh, right. So if you're listening live, you can be in the chat room. So go, go to dbh.fm and you'll see the live section there. You'll be able to join the chat room. And then there's a little showbot that's running in there. In dbh? In dbh. Cool. And uh, you do uh, exclamation point, which in programmers' uh, world we call bang. No offense. You type bang <laughs> s, and then the title. So bang s, and then you would type the title in there. Do we got to get? I want. I want more live listeners. I have to tell you, the numbers on this show are are are, are way better than I was uh, thinking they would be by now. So thank you to everybody who's yes, listening. Like you. literally, if you want, uh, Hattie will come and have dinner with you as a thank what? you. And this is something we talked about offline. Uh, she will come and have have dinner in your town. <laughs> I to never say, agreed to say a special that. thank you for everyone who's tuning into this show. So thank you very much uh, for tuning in. But I would love it if you could tune in live uh, and listen live. And you can do that in a number of ways. I just I feel like that was a public service announcement. I've got to do this. It is. Go to you. Go to uh, 
well, right now it's on 5 by 5 also. So you go to 5 by 5fm You just open that in any browser, mobile, desktop, whatever you can hear. It. You get the 5 by 5 app. You can hear it there, play it there. Yep. But there's going to be more ways to do that. Or you just go to dbh.fm if you're in front of like a regular computer. Or I, that'll actually work on your iPhone and Android too. Kind Speaking of phones, Hattie. Yes. You almost bought today a Microsoft Windows phone. I did not, but I was in the Microsoft store. <laughs> what were you doing in a Microsoft store? Well, we were standing in the Apple store after we were checking out some Dre Beats. Dre Beats. We were be- Beats by Dre we headphones. Were beating up the Beats by Dre. The Beats by Dre headphones. Un- uh, unbelievably heavy headphones. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. stay on my head. They would just fall right off. They're, they weigh a lot. I'm trying to gauge the weight of of these headphones here these are the uh, the lovely and i would say industry standard i love those they're so nice uh, and light. these are the sony uh mdr 7506 these are and have been for many many years the industry standard uh headphones that that people in a studio or in a recording they session so good. would listen to they're not designed to to be like i wouldn't say i want to like listen to music on like these. you're not going to plug those into your iphone and like go on a walk you could you could. You can, but, but yes. what they're known for is is being studio monitors. That means that they provide you with the most clear, true, unaffected. Una- yes, exactly. And these are very lightweight, very comfortable to wear for long periods of time. And many people will ask me, Hattie, Dan, why? Look, Hattie doesn't seem to be wearing headphones right now, but she is. She's wearing little in ear headphones. Uh, because it messes with her hair or something. It gives me the headphone hair. So if I wear those for too long, yeah. They'll, you know, I wear them over the top of my hair, and then when I I get like a little indentation, right? It's very strange. I look so, like Princess Leia, yeah, in a way, yeah. And uh, and so for her, she's got the little in it. But uh, these I wear. You so people would say why, especially if you're on video. Why do you wear? Why do you wear headphones at all? But there's so many reasons. The first reason is you you know, and I don't want to make this a podcast method, which I'm late doing. Right as of today. Uh, but. <laughs> Uh, you know, you, you have to hear how you sound. You have to hear how your guests who may be remote sound. Right, it's for monitoring. We have to monitor. Mm-hmm. And I need to monitor my own voice. It's a sign of a true professional. I need to care. know if I'm getting too loud, which right. I have a problem with. <laughs> now, you're a professional. I try to be. So anyway, that's why we wear headphones. Anyway, we went in and we, and we were trying out the Dre Beats. Yes. And they were way too heavy. And we were standing there and... What did you say? You said something. You were reading a tweet from Andy Anotko. Andy Anotko tweeted out how he was talking about how lovely the the Windows phone user experience was. And I realized I've never used one of these. And then we realized, well, there is a Microsoft store right over there. In the there. domain here in Austin, Texas. I had to whisper, whisper the word Microsoft store mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. while we were in the Apple store. But then we, so we decided to go in and it. We were not accosted, unlike when the Surface first came out. We were accosted, but I think that was opening folks. day or whatever release day for yeah. that. Um, but yeah, we looked at all the different phones, and you almost bought one. That was the thing that surprised me buy one. was how you almost no. bought one. But um, not not impressed. Not impressed. No, I love Android. I would, I, I would. I'll switch to an Android phone as soon as I can find one that has a, as good of a camera as my iPhone five S. And then I'm holding out for a good camera. I so, s- listeners, if you're on Android. And I'm, when I say switch, I should correct that. I love my iPhone. I will not be switching from it. I will <laughs> buy an Android phone to use in tandem so that I can keep in a foot in both worlds. Mm-hmm. I still like I still like Apple stuff best. Me too. And I'm now now after talking to Filmer last week, I think I, I might I like might that. even have to get an app. I've been saying all this time I'm not going to get an Apple Watch. Not going to get an Apple Watch. And I talked to Filmer for ten minutes. Now I want an Apple Watch. He can do that. He has that power. He's a strong man. Even, <laughs> even strong men cry, Hattie. I know. So anyway, I, I'm very excited about the potential for, uh, for this. HBO Now. I want this. Because then it'll finally give me the chance to not pay almost $200 to sometimes watch, you know, The Bachelor and Down Abbey. Meanwhile, yeah, meanwhile, not that's, to be... I'm paying $200 to watch Down Abbey. That's basically what I'm doing. <laughs> not to be outdone. Sling TV. Have you heard of, the, of Sling TV? I have not. I've heard of Sling Box. Okay, Sling TV has 20 do- for 20 bucks a month. 
Okay, you get 16 live channels, and they're adding AMC and IFC. Uh, for an extra five bucks, you get this thing new. It's called Hollywood Extra, which I know you're a fan of that. Extra. That's what they do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do it again. Extra. Okay. <laughs> For an extra five bucks a month, you get Hollywood Extra. Add-on includes uh, four VOD-capable epics movie channels and Sundance TV. So if, if you're into this whole Sling TV thing, it's just a matter of time. I've been saying it for years. It's a matter of time before all these companies realize that nobody alive wants to pay cable companies anymore. Cable companies should provide us with a bandwidth pipe, and that's it. I agree. And that Chrysler 300, boy, I'll tell you what. Someone tweeted us about the yeah, uh, Chrysler Yeah, Yeah, they're going to try and put us in touch with their marketing group. But I feel like I'm on track to get a Chrysler 300 uh, for, as a sponsor of this show. I'll take, you know what? I'll take a 2015 model. I don't need the 2016 model. I'll take a 2015. I would prefer the 2016 if you're listening. <laughs> but you'll take it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, you got to do what you got to do. So let's see one last thing. I just want to kind of go over this on Monday. We will be doing a special thing during the event. Now the event yes, is a 10 Pacific time. You ready with our guest? Yes. 10 Pacific time is when we're going to be, uh, going to be going on on the air to talk about the Apple watch. We've already kind of, they've unveiled it, right? They've already unveiled the watch. We know what's going to be there, right? But now we're going to see what's really going to ship. We saw what Apple. We was, saw the teaser trailer. Yeah, and we're about to see the theatrical the re, the trailer. Theat <laughs> thank you. That's what I keep you around for. Let me I tell know. you about Audible. It's the internet's in leading provider of spoken word entertainment, and uh, I've got to tell you, they're doing. They're, they're, first of all, they're it's a great company, and if I, I love to read, but I hardly have the time anymore to read. And Hattie, I actually saw. You had a book with you. You brought a book with you. <laughs> I always bring a book on with me the on trip a trip to Atlanta. And it never gets opened. Yeah. Ever. But you do have plenty of time when you're driving around, when you're running errands, when you're on a walk. There's plenty of time to listen to a book. And the best place to go for that is Audible. If you have not tried Audible, now is a wonderful, wonderful time to do it because with this special promotion, you can get a free copy a free book and you get the book and you keep it. You have it. You just sign up. You choose from over 150,000 titles. You download it instantly and it it's yours. Like it's your book. Just like if you went to the store and bought one, it's yours. You go to this store and you buy one and it's yours. And they have some of the best books out there. And not only that, but they're narrated by professional uh, people, either the people who wrote the book could be the people who wrote the book. It could be a professional voice narrator. You and know who, you know who uh, narrated a book uh, on audible? Who's that? Jeff Kanata. Jeff Kanata did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the host of an uh, amazing DLC right here on the five by five network. He narrated a book. I want to narrate a book. The Harry Potter books, I think, are the ones we're going to, because my kid is almost ready. Best narrator to, ever. My kid is almost ready to do that. But they, like, that, that book is known for, so anyway, for go here yeah. and you get a free audiobook and the URL to go to, oh, and by the way, you, you download this, it works with your iPhone, iPad, Android device. And it remembers listen where you are. Yeah. It, they, they've got a sync feature so that if you listen to it, let's say you're driving to work and you get a plan on your, on your iPhone mm -hmm. while you're driving to work. Right. And then you get home and you're sitting in front of the fireplace with your Android Nexus 7, uh -huh. you launch the app on that, it picks up right where you left off. It's perfect. It's genius stuff. Audiblepodcast.com slash Dan sent me. Audiblepodcast.com slash Dan sent me. Go there. You will get a free book. I don't understand what, why people don't do this. It's a free book. Pick any book that you, oh my gosh. They just want to give you a book. Right. They want you to read. They want you to read. Get Mars. Get that Mars book or something. Yeah. That's a good book. I still have to read that or listen to that. I should or say. Stephen Hawking's book. Stephen, yeah, we, ju we just saw that movie on the plane. We uh -huh. watched, okay, ho hold yes, on. Yes, hold on. Tell the guests they're going to be late. <laughs> I've got to tell you right now, two movies. First of all, the movie that, that I nominate and award Best Picture for 2015 is Whiplash. Me too. 
Do you agree with that? When and I believe we talked about this. We were talking. We were like, "What's whiplash?" That is our official award, uh, yes. nom- single nominee and winner <laughs> uh, for this that show movie, of the 2015 award-winning oh, man. movie. That was, uh, in a way, it was kind of a perfect movie for me. Yeah, I loved it. It it was inspiring. I love to see someone that you know is trying to achieve greatness. Yeah. And I don't know. It was it was so good. I loved it. Okay. Well, I agree with you. I agree with you completely. I agree with you. I think that uh, next year's nominees are going to be, you know, same. We'll have one nominee and we'll have one winner. I like it. But I'm serious. Go get this movie right now. This is amazing. It's worth seeing. Uh, yep. Totally worth seeing. So that's number one. Number two, we saw the uh, theory of uh, everything. A theory of everything. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Uh, he won the Oscar. He won for best actor. Yeah, right? best actor. I. First of all, I completely agree with yeah, that. Yeah, amazing. Like, you, what did you say while we were sitting on the plane watching this thing on the way there or way back? You're like, I have to. I had to the entire time in every scene. I was like, I had to remind myself. Oh, that's not that's really not actually yeah, right. Stephen Hawking. That's not actually Stephen Hawking. Like in it's my mind, actor. I was like watching just a whole home movie <laughs> that's been produced right. beautifully. Was that good? <laughs> yeah, he became him. It was totally it was did. awesome. Um, so go see those, go see those. Yeah. Anyway, on Monday, we're going to have a special thing. So you're going to tune in during the event and we'll have a special show. And uh, Jeff Kanata is doing his own thing in the other room. Doesn't matter. We got two rooms now. Yep. We got the video room and we've got, uh, we've got the, the audio room. So who cares about that? People are saying the Apple watch has a lightning port, but it turns out it's just a lightning port for development, for developing while they're developing and it won't actually ship. So for everybody who is super excited about plugging, uh, their Apple Watch into stuff. No. Nope. Not nope. gonna happen. I just, ha- I'm so excited about, I have, to, I know this is not the right place, Hattie. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm fixing my earpiece. See, that's why I got the over your headphones. I they like Because they don't the pop over- out. They don't well, pop it's, out it's of my ears. It's not popping out, it just, it itched. Ew. I know. <laughs> so, first of all, a lot of people are asking what mic this is. This is, this, this microphone right here, Hattie. This microphone right here. <laughs> Uh-huh. is my favorite microphone that I've ever used for broadcast applications. It is a telefun- Telefunken M82. And I love it. <laughs> now, people will say, oh, that's a kick drum mic, Dan. That's a kick drum mic. Well, so is the RE20, the, the number one microphone used in broadcasting mm-hmm. radio stations around the world. The RE20, yeah, that's also a kick drum mic. Lots of kick drum mics are also excellent vocal mics. Yep. Because uh, your voice and a kick drum, I guess, are the same. I don't know. Uh, but this this mic I tried after years of using the Heil PR40, which is still a mic that we love. And it's the one that, if you listen to me on, on Back to Work and, and Podcast Method, other ones that, that I record in the audio room, they uh, I'm recording them with, with the Heil PR40. It's great. But this mic, so a lot of people have asked about this mic. It's kind of an inside baseball thing, but it's a great mic. Hattie's on, awesome. a, Hattie's on a Shure SM7B. Yep. I like this. I like this one. Those those are great microphones. It helps me sound not so shrill. Right. Well, they the <laughs> those microphones work well with a variety of voices, but I find that that they work exceptionally well with many women's voices. Mm-hmm. It's not a lady mic nope. by any stretch of the imagination, nope. but uh, it, it, it just it, is really nice. It sounds great. You sound great through mm-hmm. it. I love it. Uh, so that's that's all we got about the Apple Watch. We will be doing something special. And the last thing, Hattie. I wanted to show you because mm-hmm. I know you're on the lookout for uh, for a new phone <laughs> coming from from the Microsoft Store today. Right. Uh, is is this is the new uh, Galaxy S6 and they have the Galaxy S6 Edge? I thought the Edge was kind of cool when I first saw it. Like your all of your little notifications and everything are on the side. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, they have this stuff on the side. I don't understand why they make us watch this this the thing IBM every single time. Every yeah. single time. I'm I'm you know I like IBM. They're doing great stuff, but there's this commercial is on constantly every time I go, and if you pause it, it restarts it. So <laughs> they know shame on the Verge, and we got to get Neli on here. Yep. Shame on him for not being on the show. I've invited him to the show twice. Neli, I know you're listening. <laughs> He's reckless on uh, R E C K L E S S on Twitter. Get on his back because he should be on the show. Anyway, that this Samsung six, the, the difference between the S six and the S six Edge is is. The S6 the edge. edge has that cool <laughs> curved edge, uh, and and this one doesn't. So you've got a bit of a choice. Which one do you want? Do you want to go with the curve? 
Do you not want the curve? It's your choice. And I, I kind of think that's an interesting way to do it. I wonder why they didn't just come out with just one version of it. That's yeah. That seems like a lot of like you get you want the edge. You don't want the edge. Skews, yeah. But I guess they're trying to be oh, anyway. This phone looks looks really good. There it is. What do you think of this? Would you use this? I think it looks pretty cool. You I like that better than the the interface on the Windows Windows phone. On today. the Windows phone. Windows phone. Oh. Title. <laughs> anyway, this is this looks like a really nice phone, and uh, it's supposed to have a pretty good camera, fast camera. I just I like to keep you know I like to keep one foot in in the Android space and one foot in the Apple space. Nothing wrong with that. Nope, nothing wrong. All right, at all. so listen, I went to Atlanta, and uh, and I'm hanging out in Atlanta. I dropped this keynote speech of my life. This is the best best speech I think anyone's heard in Atlanta. Is that best I think speech it's in Atlanta? Yeah, I dropped that. Then I find out I'm going to be a, a panelist. I'm a judge. That's fine. I can judge people easy. <laughs> so I sit up there on stage. I judge people for a few hours, and uh, you know come off the stage and like, yeah, so, you know, like what's happening in the world? What's going, what's going on in the world? Let's not, check not, Twitter. Nothing, mm. Nothing's going on in, in the world. And you know, in the few hours that I was offline, well, it turns out actually my, as, as the kids say, my Twitter feed was blowing up, blowing up, blowing up with this brand new, uh, app called meerkat and meerkat. It's this live streaming app. It is a new thing that pretty much has taken over Twitter. And uh, it's, it's actually really, really, really cool. But uh, uh, so we've got, I went, uh, I went out and I said to my producers, because I have a, a, a huge team of, in, and, it, and by the way, if you want to be a producer for this show, there's very little compensation. You will get maybe a <laughs> sticker. A t-shirt, maybe a mug, something like that. And contact with us. And direct contact. <laughs> and Hattie will come to your you town for dinner. our emails. And I'm going to do a mug. You know how Johnny Carson had the Johnny Carson mug? The Trust very me, rare... I've been trying to recreate that for a long time. I'm going to do a mug like that. And instead of having Johnny Carson or, or John Johnny Roderick. John, Johnny Carson. There is Johnny uh, Carson on it. It will, it will have uh, Danny Benjamin on it. Mm. And uh, you will be able to uh, to get one of those, perhaps, if you're a producer of the show. And that means you you give me insider tips. You give me insider information. You contact me with You'll secrets. You'll be a correspondent. You're a correspondent out in the field. I can send you out to wait uh, for barbecue in the cold and bring it here. Things like that. Yep. And uh, anyway, you want to be a producer, hit me up on Twitter at Dan Benjamin and say, I want, I want to be a producer. I want to, sh- I want to produce the show. And, help uh, help and, with content. And you will be asked... Uh, at some point in the future to do a favor and uh, there will be no refusal of a favor. Correct. Anyway, Heidi, could you please get, who are we getting? I went to the meerkat guys and I said, I, I, can someone from there come on the show and uh, talk about this, th- how this has become this crazy uh, sensation. And they sent over their, their awesome uh, Russell. Is that his name? Ryan Cooley. Ryan Cooley. I knew I'd get it. I knew it was an R name. Russell was last Russell Brand. week or last episode. If you missed episode four, I had Russell Brand on the show <laughs> of episode four. So yeah. look at, look at, look how cute, look how cute that is. Oh. And that cute. Can I've you describe, Hattie, can you describe it's a lovely yellow, what it is that we're, yellow we're background, looking at here? And uh, on it is a little, it's like a little uh, black and white the drawing. It's almost uh, like in watercolor uh, of a little meerkat. From the side, the profile of Meerkat. Pretty good. He's so cute. All right. You got him online or what? I'm going to call him right now. Call him. How are those lower thirds coming, Hattie? Coming along nicely. Hey, Dan. Hey, thanks hey. for uh, thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. How so, are you guys? So what do you, what do, you do over there at uh, at the Meerkat? What is it that you, that you do? So my job since we launched Yevo, which was our original product uh, in 2013, has been to educate our existing community and find people and use cases that are good for evangelizing the product. So I've been doing this with Yevo. I've done this with our other product, Air, which is personal streaming, and now I'm doing it with Meerkat. So I'm basically the person on the ground that's talking to all of our users understanding how they engage with live streams right. because it's a, it's a pretty new medium as far as social goes. We haven't seen it really take off yet. 
and kind of figure out what it all means and who's really going to embrace it. So how does, I mean, how does the app work? Because everybody's talking about this, but maybe you can walk me through why this is a, why is this a big deal? Like for me as a geek who's streaming stuff right now already, like I get, I get why it's a big deal, but why is this a big deal for like the regular person? Yeah. Because so, it's a big deal. Twitter's blowing up with this. Like they're going crazy. People who are just sitting in their office are like all of a sudden now they're streaming themselves out into the world. Yeah. So I'll, why don't I tell the quick story of it and I'll yeah. explain. Because what, this wasn't even your app. How come this always happens? Like Twitter itself, Odeo was, Odeo was supposed to be the app. That was supposed yep. to be the company. That's right. And it turns out Twitter was like this little goofy thing they did in a weekend. And, right. uh, and, and yours is the same. This was just like a little fun experiment, right? Yeah, let me break it down for you very quickly. Basically, we had this original product called Yevo. It was personal live streaming. It was a self-contained community of people that would stream to each other. So you would have your followers on Yevo, and you would follow people on Yevo, and, and you could go live, and it would push notify your followers, very similar to what Meerkat does now with much less of a Twitter integration. Okay, And it was a self-contained community. Uh, we saw a lot of traction in Mexico and in Latin America and in Northern Europe uh, and in some communities around the United States. And what happened was we saw two major uses of the app. So one is, hey, I'm at grandma's house. She's turning 89. She's blowing out the birthday candles. I, I, I want to send this stream out to, to my friends and my family and people that I know are going to care about grandma blowing out the candles. Okay, that was one. Highly personal, highly intimate high context streaming. The other use case that we saw in Yevo was people with an audience coming in to engage with their fans and engage with their audience much more quickly. And we saw them leveraging Twitter for that. Uh, we were slightly integrated with Twitter at that point. You could push out a, a link onto Twitter and people could watch you on the web, but it wasn't such a rich experience like it is now. Uh, so we saw those two use cases. We built Air, which is the personal streaming for uh, Grandma's birthday. And then we have Meerkat, which was actually just a side project, and we built that for people with an audience to immediately reach their audience over the live video and actually create the content together by getting their audience to start a conversation. And so it's not just broadcasting, it's actually a participatory medium, if that makes sense. No, it totally does. And by the way, I'm streaming this with Meerkat right now <laughs> while we're doing this. So I'm, I'm, I'm streaming myself with Meerkat. The funny thing is p people can't really hear your questions. So they can right, right. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's such a fun, it's such a fun thing. It's so easy and instant uh, way to do this. And, uh, and, you know, it's kind of fun. I mean, the, the basic things that you want to be able to do are just stream something, right? And send it out and share it, share it with people who follow you, share a little moment like that. You know, like right now, people who are watching this are seeing like a behind the scenes because I've got the camera flipped. So it's using my selfie camera and, uh, and sending it. And, you know, I, I think it's just such a fun idea and no no wonder people like this it's immediate but i love you know i was looking at at this thing where it's, it talks about you know the rules the rules of meerkat mm -hmm. um and it, it they're all uh, is this intentional they kind of are a little bit like uh, the fight club uh rules yeah they are i mean like like i said this is a this was a fun side project and we had some like very simple uh parameters for it um, the, the, the rule that everybody needs to remember <laughs> that I continue to remind people of is that everything that happens on Meerkat also happens on Twitter, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was a dead simple product. We didn't think that we needed to bombard users with, uh, all sorts of frequently asked questions and this and that. I mean, we wanted the product to speak for itself. I think any good product speaks for itself. So all of a sudden this thing is, you know, everybody's using this thing. The next thing you know, you're going to watch a today show, you know, on Saturday morning tomorrow or something and they're, they're going to be using it they're going to be streaming it out you know why do you think that meerkat because there have been other things that have done i mean look you know people have had things like like the the now defunct justin tv for a long right. time where you could get the justin tv app and stream yourself and neat kind of cool you know people were using it but like why now what is it about right now at this moment that sets Meerkat apart, that makes everybody kind of, they're all jumping up. Because honestly, this is really cool. And if, you know, it, it's, it's like the next level of the selfie in a way. It's the video selfie, but it's that shared moment. But the, right. the way that it is, is it's live only. It's only live. I mean, I can save the, the do I call it a Meerkat as a noun? The stream? What am I supposed to call it? The stream? Uh, yes. 
Yeah, you can call it a meerkat. <laughs> the meerkat that I just made when I, when I was doing this behind the scenes, right? Uh, yeah. I save that to my phone. I can save it to my phone. It goes into my photo album. Uh, but it's not like up in the cloud. People can't go and see this on their own later. Why, why not? Is it just you don't want to pay the hosting costs? Or, or is, there, is there something about the immediacy of the live stream that, that makes it fun? Yeah, so uh, certainly the latter is definitely true, right? Um, there's something very compelling about live video and about uh, kind of concurrent usage and, and a sense of presence uh, when you're using a social technology, uh, knowing that a person is there. But, you know, we've, we've seen manifestations of this since uh, AIM, right, back in the day when you would see the little dots person is typing. Right. People really enjoy that. They like to know that people are engaging with them in real time, okay, Obviously, it's highly compelling when, you, when you're working with video. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of your question about why now, um, you're right. We've seen a lot of other live streaming products. And uh, during the Arab Spring, Bamboozer actually got a bit of press because people were using that. Uh, they were just pulling out their phones and they were live streaming what was going on in Cairo. Right. Um, it's amazing. I, it's ama- and, and just when you think about this for the novelty of it, for, hey, grandma, look, look at your grandson, you know, that kind of thing. Like, that's fun. But like the idea of doing this as, as a, a kind of correspondence, as a kind of news story, right. everything from something uh, trivial or fun, like I'm in line to go get the new, you know, phone, mm-hmm. uh, all the way to like you're talking about, like I'm, I'm here where the earthquake just happened. Right, I'm in the middle or, of a hurricane right, right. now. I mean, this, what an empowering, awesome thing to, to give people. It's yeah. just so, so, so cool. Yeah. And I think that in terms of news delivery, like that's a very, um, that's a very easy use case for people to consume, right? Like I can, I can explain that to people and they get it immediately. Yeah. yeah. I think that we're going to see some other more interesting use cases that aren't as easy to predict though. And that's what I'm really looking forward to. Like what? I mean, obviously you say they're hard to predict, but I'm curious, what, what are you thinking about? What do you think might come out of that? Uh, I think that we'll see some interesting use around sports, for one. Um, I think that we'll see some interesting use around uh, creating a, a live conversation mm-hmm. and uh, in a way that is not just one-to-many, but it's actually a real, it's a piece of content in its own, and, and everybody that's watching is participating on an equal level as the people that are actually streaming. Right. This, this product, like I said, is, you know... It, all social live streaming, if you're able to chat and you're able to stream, is highly contextual. Mm-hmm. So uh, try not to think of it so much as just a place for you to blast your reality out to everybody. Mm-hmm. It's a place for you to actually bring people in, if that makes sense. No, it totally does. Uh, and, that, and that's something I think that people are just so, so interested in uh, these days, in that kind of sharing. Um, are there any legal issues, because you mentioned sports, um, there are a lot of legal issues surrounding coverage of sports. For example, mm-hmm. if there was a really great NFL game on, mm-hmm. and I said, you know what, I'm just going to go, I'm going to run over to the studio and like talk about this game. Mm-hmm. I cannot do that. I, it is illegal right. for me to do they that. Have that little disclaimer uh, when you're watching an NFL game. That's right. Until the game is over. My yeah, understanding is like it's illegal for me to to do that. It's illegal for me to cover the game uh, later. So I mean, until until right. later, is that an issue? Like, whose fault would that be? Would that be you, or would it be on the the uh, you know the, uh, the responsibility of the person uh, who who's no, actually uh, making the video? No, we'd be completely exonerated from that. It's the user that's actually generating the content that would be implicated in any sort of issue there. Right. Are you, I mean, are you guys worried about that kind of thing happening uh, or, or what? I, you know, um, don't take it the wrong way, but th- that's kind of like a good problem for us to have. If we get to <laughs> right? Yeah. Where all of a sudden the NFL is saying, uh-oh, Meerkat's coming in and they're, they're, uh, they're stealing all the audiences from the, from the networks that uh, are paying us. You right, know, that, so, I mean, uh, what, you, you mentioned that, like, what's the next thing for you guys? Because right now, this essentially, it's broadcast on twitter in other words if i launch meerkat and i start streaming it a tweet goes out and the people who follow me on twitter or the people who retweet me somebody in that sphere are going to hear oh dan is broadcasting this cool thing that's happening right now and i want to tune into that and and then i get to see on my phone i get to see 
who is actually uh, watching right then. And when I'm done, I hit stop. And if you missed it, you missed it. Right. I mean, is is there a future to this where it, there is some kind of storage where it doesn't become just a live thing? Because, for example, um, if, you know, if I was covering something that I want my friend's wedding, like I know I can save that here, I can mm-hmm. stream it out, but wouldn't it be neat to just, Put it up there. So, like, I see the evolution of, yes, I mean, I could go and then take the thing that I just recorded and yeah. post it myself, right? Uh, but, I mean, do you, do you guys feel like this is something that that well, could evolve into that where you can then find other people's things outside of Twitter? Or, or is this, do you like it the way it is for now? Sure. Uh, I mean, we, of course, we're, we're taking tons of feedback and there's... There's plenty of room for the product to evolve. I mean, we, we launched seven days ago. <laughs> right. I mean, that's right. crazy. You, you've got it. That's totally crazy to me that you've launched. Now, can you share? Can you share information? How many? How many meerkats have been made? How many streams have been created? How many people are using it? Can you share any of that here first before anywhere you've shared it anywhere else? Uh no, not at the moment. But what I can say is that we've been doing live streaming for a while now, and this is our third live streaming product, we understand what it means to, to really be engaged with a live streaming platform. Yeah. Right? Done the, we've already done it twice. And uh, what we're seeing is, is very, very encouraging. And let me answer your question about saving the streams within the actual app itself. Mm-hmm. Because live video is, uh, as we were talking about before, it's such an unfamiliar medium to a lot of people with social. It's not the most comfortable, right? right? Knowing pe- that people are there watching you. I mean, it, it, we need to educate people on why live can be cool and how it can be super compelling. And when you combine it with another medium, and I consider saved video a completely different medium because the experience of consuming a saved video is so much different than right. consuming live. Right. When when you conflate those within the same product, we've actually seen that it's it's had it's had a negative effect on people kind of understanding how to use it. All of a sudden, then it becomes oh. This is just my video app where I shoot videos and people can come back and watch them. Right. So we saw that in our last product and, and we kind of scratched our heads and said, you know what? Like as simplify, much as people, simplify, simplify, right? Simplify. Yeah, exactly. As much as people want archived video, hey, let's let them take care of that on their own terms, right? We'll let you download the stream. But we really want to maintain integrity to the medium. And right. so that's why we're not doing that right now. Very cool. Well, uh, before the show, uh, we had a quick conversation. And, uh, and, and you said, listen, don't throw me any really hard technical questions. Cause I'm not, I'm not the software guy. <laughs> yeah. And so I promised I wouldn't, but one thing that I think a lot of people are going to want to know is when it comes to integrating, uh, and adding this kind of functionality and things like that, it's sure. a, it's a very exciting thing. And, uh, and I, I can think of so many fun ways that we could do it with this show, um, is that something that, that you can see potentially those kinds of partnerships, integrations moving? I mean, th- there's a lot of people, I, I don't v- really use Facebook. I have some like, you know, five by five and, and, and related pages there, but I don't really yeah. use Facebook. Uh, but there are a lot of people who only use Facebook and don't use Twitter. It, do you, you know, what about integrating with Facebook Mo- plans to move into these, these different social networks, you know, tie in into that. Is that something that's kind of on, on your mind as well? Uh, certainly it is. Uh, Twitter is obviously. I mean, Twitter's bad. I like more, Twitter better. It's, so. it's more of a real time platform. Very much you know, more. If you post something on Facebook, you know, that, that this is, you know, they'll admit themselves only 12% of your network is actually going to be able to consume what you post. Right. So that wouldn't be such a, that wouldn't be such a satisfying experience. I think for a lot of people, if they relied on Facebook to distribute their streams, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, sure. It's certainly possible. Right. Um, but we saw such good success with Twitter, uh, when it came to our previous product, yeah. we decided to kind of, uh, see what would happen if we could create a live conversation on Twitter while having people engage over a live stream on Meerkat and, right. you know, so far so good. So, <laughs> well, listen, I appreciate you being on How can, how should people find you right now? If they have more specific questions, they want to ask you and harass you. <laughs> What's the best way to do it? Who are you? Twitter. You find me on Twitter. I will reply on Twitter faster than pretty much any other platform. So. And you are at? Ryan P. Cooley. P. Cooley. I, uh, I, see, <laughs> I see someone tweeted at Ryan Cooley earlier, and he tweeted back. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. Uh, so Ryan P. Cooley, C-O-O-L-E-Y. So uh, thanks very much for being here, Ryan. I appreciate it. 
And uh, let me know when you, you need uh, someone like me on your board of directors. Mm -hmm. chairman, of chairman position is, you know, it, when it opens up, let me know. All right. We All start right. Tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. I saw Hattie. I saw you uh, meerkatting. I did. I did a meerkat. I meerkatted. Meerkat. Did anyone, did any live? Uh, eight, eight people. Eight people was, it was up? like instantaneous. It was kind yeah, of crazy. Yeah, that's the weird <laughs> thing I noticed that too. Like I turned the thing on and like instantly. Right. There was, a, there was because, like 10 people on there. You know, and that's funny because like you're looking at Twitter and you see a link that, and you're clicking on it. You know, yeah. sometimes when somebody posts like an Instagram, it was like one second ago. Right. And you like it. You're like, oh, I'm kind of a creep. But like, right. this is what this app no, is you made want, for. Yeah, you, you, want you want that. You want, you want that. Okay, so uh, we've got to do we've got to do uh, one more uh, guest today, Joe. Yes, Joe is going to be. What am I talking to him about? Uh, you were talking to him about. Uh, I believe he's written an article. He wrote an article that uh, that moved me. It, mo it moved you. Yeah, an emotional article. Before we do it, before you get him, I want to do our last sponsor of the day. And and gosh, what a fun, what a fun sponsor this is. What's more fun than clothes? The easiest way to never have to shop again. Guys, you paying attention to this? Because shopping, you know, it's 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 not, it's not yeah, not a lot of guys like shopping. Uh five four club makes it so you don't have to shop ever again. Really. I feel like you could also say that they save you money on gas too. You know what? And they said they help the environment. Yep. 5-4 Club is helping the environment. That's right. They're, I mean, they're going to have to run with that. Yeah. But uh, basically, effortless style. And it's delivered right to your doorstep. Are you a t-shirt and jeans kind of dude? Are you a dressed and pressed kind of dude? Are you business casual kind of dude? Do you hate the way I'm saying dude? <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter because you tell them. You go to the website. And the, the website is get54.com. Get54.com. You go to there and you fill out this incredibly simple, straightforward little little profile where you answer some basic questions. How would you describe your style? Who are you? You're watching this on, on video. You can see you can see what their website looks like. Oh, look at that. Wait, what do you have? You have the jacket on the far right or no? I don't think I have. Oh, uh, that one. That yeah, the yeah the that's, that's the bomber right there that I keep talking about. You like that. That's a good one. So I, let's just say I'm, let's say that I'm. Dressed in, I'll be dressed and impressed for the sake of argument here. Now it comes back. What color scheme do you like to wear the most? Monotone. Duh. And then my size, I'm small. And then my waist size is a 29. And then bottom fit, slim. Shoe size. Now, once you know my shoe size, I think I want my nine and a half. Yes, sure. Why not? And then it asks you, you know, it's asking your favorite of these three shirts. It's trying to learn. Which do I like you, best? Yeah. Okay, and then I'll say my, my second favorite, that one. Boom. Now it's saying, what kind of jean style do you like? You go through, and it's it, the thing is, Look, you're you building only have this, two questions left. You're, you're building this really one. cool profile. Yeah. And it only takes seconds to do it. And then when you're done, boom, now they know about me. At this point, it says, okay, connect with Facebook or enter your email to make an account. And you're done. That was fun. That was fun. But now they know my whole the profile. The pictures are, are so beautiful. They know so my beautiful. whole profile, yeah. and they start sending me clothes. You get... $60 a month, you get $120 worth of clothing, and the clothing is awesome. I've got it. I keep talking about this bomber jacket, but they've got more than that. I've got a couple shirts I've been wearing the heck out of, and they send you this every month. If the size is wrong, if the fit is wrong, you send it them, they send it back the right size. Yep. Great stuff. And uh, get 54com and I'm going to save you with, with this code. You're going to save $20 off your first box, so you're going to get it for 40 bucks. $120 of clothing. Dan, 20 off. Dan, 20 off. And isn't there a referral code for, um, you know, you if you refer people, you get Yeah, then you get, you get money. So if you, you, get, you get some of this stuff, you like it, and you send it to your, fr you tell your friends about it, you get, what is it, 50? I don't want to say 15, it wrong. 50, but I, think I think it's 15 bucks off your something. next thing. Yeah. Anyway, you got to check this out, guys, especially if, even if you like shopping, you're going to like this. So, uh, so go check it out. Again, the URL to go to. Get54.com. Code is Dan20. Off. Thank you very much to them for making this show possible. Joe, how do you say his last name? You said it correctly before. Coyote. Mm-hmm. How do you know that for sure? Because he said, you said my name right. 
<laughs> I, oh, so I actually said it right. And I don't think he was talking about Joe. The yeah, because the Joe part's easy. That's easy. Joe A. All we'll right. Well, yeah, get him on. Get him on the show. <laughs> My God. How do you spell his last name? C A I A T I. Hello. Joe. Dan. Welcome to the show, Joe. Thanks for having me. I'm glad that you're here. Now, you, you yourself are a podcaster, we got to say, aren't you? Yes, yes. I, am, uh, I do a uh, show called Diagnostics and Usage with uh, my co-host, Cody Coates. Cody Coates. Yeah, it's a good name. Easier to say than yours. Yeah, just a little. Yeah. So you have, but you've done a whole bunch of things. And one of the things that, uh, that, uh, that I talked about a little bit earlier on the show, uh, you wrote a really nice piece about thoughts about Thank HBO you. now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's an exciting, it's an exciting new service. It's a great service that no one has used yet, but that it <laughs> seems like it will be, it will be wonderful. And you know, this is the kind of thing you, you yourself are a, a cord cutter. Correct. And to, can you just give me, give me a rundown of this article. Tell me what, tell me what uh, the listeners, what, what this is all about. And uh, because I thought you made some really interesting points in it and you were one of the first people to, to write, such a comprehensive response to the not real announcement of HBO uh, now, but you're, you've got some concerns. You're worried. Yeah, Dan, I, I don't have the best track record right now with HBO go. It's yeah. uh, it's been pretty spotty, especially when there is a huge premiere. Um, and I know they're looking to get this service out for the game of Thrones premiere. And that is probably their most popular show. Uh, and they need to be a hundred percent if, if they're going to go live before, I think it's like April 12th or the second, um, because HBO go in its current, uh, iteration, uh, I've had problems. You know, I, I mentioned in my article that like when the true detective season yeah. finale came on, I was super excited to watch that. Uh, I was, you know, waiting for the clock to strike nine and, and then everything just exploded. Apple TV froze. The app was throwing up these weird database SQL errors. And, uh, a lot of people were pretty pissed off. They didn't get to see it. If they, if they were not live in front of their television at that time, they weren't able to see it till the next day. Now, Hattie, didn't you run into a problem like that? I think so. Yeah, I, I forget was having, what it was, but like you were trying, there was something that had just come out. You were trying to watch it, and you were freaking out. You blew, yeah. you blew up my Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, about blew, it. Blew up your Twitter. But this is one of those things that you know you, you've you've for, for I'm I'm going to get the HBO uh, now for sure. Me too. Totally. So gonna why? Get it. But yes, this is a concern, dude, because <laughs> you know you want very much to know that when that show comes out, I may not be sitting there with the remote in my hand and, and, and that thing's going to drop at nine. I'm going to go, you know, it took me a couple of days to, to start watching the new house of cards. That's what it was. It was house of cards. I was loading that up on my Apple TV and it just, it was, you know, I clicked Netflix and it was just like connecting, connecting, connecting. I'm like, right. <laughs> I'm starting to panic. <laughs> and so I go to, uh, I went to Netflix on my Roku and it loaded just fine. And then, so, yeah, yeah and, so, and you know, um, who knows, who knows why these things happen like that? Sometimes it's the service itself. Maybe it was just third time was the charm when you were doing it. You know, who knows? But I'm with you, uh, Joe, in that I don't know for sure that, that we can really r feel confident in this stuff yet. It's funny because we've got these, this huge infrastructure to provide cable TV. And I remember back in the day, I don't know how, how old are you, Joe? A 26. Okay. So you grew up in a, in, in a world where, in a world <laughs> where most people probably, uh, had cable, right? I mean, that was your childhood. Mm -hmm. You had, you, uh, unless you lived in like a very rural area or something, <laughs> people probably had cable TV, right? Had, that was your, that was your experience too, right? Yep. I remember getting cable TV. I remember getting color. I mean, Cartoon color Network. TV. You remember getting, I remember color, getting TV. color TV. Uh, <laughs> I look great for my age. Um, no, but I remember getting like Cartoon Network for the first time when you had to like add that as a channel and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Well, uh, you know, I mean, I remember before there was such a thing as cable TV, there was no such thing. It was invented. It was brought out. And a, a common thing that happened in my childhood, Joe, is that ca the cable would go out. And you'd oh, wow. say, cable's out. The cable's out <laughs> title, Patty. Cable's, cable's out. out. 
And we did, you would never know why it was out. And it would go out, and then you'd have no TV anymore. Um, and Kind that, of like when the internet goes out now. Right. <laughs> and the internet still goes out, but cable went out more than the internet goes out these days. And I, I vividly remember being a kid and getting super excited because HBO would start a new movie. would be either Friday or Saturday night. There'd be a new movie that would pr- premiere. And it would be like you'd be at home, like with popcorn, like w- waiting for the premiere of, you know, Back to the Future, whatever the movie was. You're going to watch. It was going to be, oh, my God. I, was, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. And the cable would go out inexplicably. It would just be out for hours. And you call the cable company. They didn't have, like, 24-hour service, and it was just cable. You know, it was just cable. Like, now, if your Internet goes out, it's, they at least, whether they get out there to fix it or not, they at least act like they understand it's a big deal. But, Joe, your cable would go out. Not that big of a deal to them. They would come out and fix it when they could, right? But, yeah. but. That's, I think, what people expect. They expect that the Internet's going to go out periodically. For, for people to cancel their, their HBO and their cable and rely on something like this, it's got to be rock solid. Yeah, and, and some of the concerns that I raised up, uh, one of them is right now HBO does not care if people are sharing their logins. You could be sharing your logins to you know, 10, 15 people, and you could all be simultaneously streaming shows. And you know, I'll admit I have one of my friend's logins, and uh, it, it, actually, um, it actually hurts the paying customers. Yeah, and now how, we have how this- does it hurt them? How does it hurt? Well, for example, they, they want to, they're, it's a paying customer, they're on vacation, and they want to watch their favorite HBO right. show, and then it's not available, and it's not really their fault. They're the paying customer, but HBO hasn't really put anything in effect where, uh, where they limit streams like Netflix does, where they right. have two simultaneous streams. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm curious if, if HBO Now is going to be a separate entity from HBO Go, or they got to leave uh, the old HBO Go infrastructure and then bring HBO now as a separate thing because they they are um, in talks or it, it's been it's been reported that they're going to be using the same back end as the MLB, MLB. at bat yeah um, which is a plus because I hear that that service is definitely a lot better um, but I'm wondering if they're going to merge this or if they're going to keep them separate you know I don't know either um, I'm very very confused about exactly what they're going to be releasing and what they're going to be doing. Um, it's, you know, it's, we're at a strange point in the story of the internet and cable TV where they're really start, the lines are starting to get blurred between where does content come from? You know, movies used to come from big movie production uh, houses and you consumed them by going to a movie theater. And then eventually you consumed them uh, when they would come to TV. And then after that, you went and rented a video. You know, that's and then Netflix came around. And then Netflix streaming came around. Mm-hmm. And really, it was Netflix streaming that changed the whole game. Changed everything. They changed everything. And thank goodness for, for Netflix because so much of, of, of what my kids watch is on Netflix now that to them, they don't call... Uh, they don't call the Roku or the uh, or or the Fire TV. They don't call it Fire TV or Roku. They call it Netflix. It is Netflix mm-hmm. to them. Uh, I'm sure Roku wouldn't be so happy about that. <laughs> but I'll say, oh, where was it? You know, oh, Dad, put this, put Finding Bigfoot on. I'll say, okay, where was it? Oh, it's on Netflix. They know that it's on Netflix, and to them, they understand that there's a separate device that's not the regular TV. It's also not the Apple TV. There's like regular TV, Apple TV, and Netflix. Those, right. those are the three things that, even though sometimes it might have been a movie that, you know, I had on DVD and I ripped and put on Plex, like even that's still Netflix. Right. Netflix is like this conduit that even as, as you know, single digit ages, they, they understand this and they grew up in an on-demand world. They grew up in an on-demand world and they're going to demand on-demand. If you think and, about it, it's it, unacceptable, Joe, it's unacceptable <laughs> for them to not be able to watch the thing that they want when they want it. I know. I think that the future of, you know, like Time Warner Cable or whatever yeah. will be the, it'll, it'll kind of be the podcast playlist subscription yeah. of television where it'll be like, I don't like for me, 
I don't need MLB. I don't, I don't need that. I want, you know, BBC. I want, um, you know, uh, like, uh, I'm trying to think of other cable channels this is how infrequently I watch regular television. Um, but you'll be able to pick and choose your your channels that you want and pay for only the ones that you watch. It's kind of like cell phones, too. You only pay for what you use. That's how it's, I, that's what I think is going to happen. Now, let me blow your mind a minute before you reply, Joe, because I could hear you getting getting ready to say something. <laughs> but in, in response, Hattie, to what you were saying, uh-huh. do you think that the next evolution of this isn't just paying for, so let's let's say in my in my household, I would want HBO, I would want ESPN, I would want MLB. Let's just and say. And whatever local channel there is. And, and, I would need that. Okay. So I've got those now, mm-hmm. right? But that's not really what I want. I don't really want HBO. Patty, I don't oh, want I HBO. Oh, I see where you're going with this, yeah. I want Game of Thrones. Yeah, you're narrowing, you narrowing, 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 narrowing. So mm-hmm. I don't, but I don't want to wait for Game of Thrones to be done and ruined for me by the internet, everyone talking about it. I want it when it comes out. But I don't want to have to get the rest of the HBO stuff. Just give me Game of Thrones. Not when it hits iTunes. Right. Not when the DVD and Blu-ray comes out. But right now, when it comes out, the way I got House of Cards, I want it right now. But I just want that. And I don't want the rest of it. Because that's the only show I watch. For example, Joe, is that you? Are there people like that out there? Is that you? I would, yeah, I would definitely love the option to just pick a particular, I, you know, I, I watch maybe one or two HBO shows um, and I don't need the the whole 10 or 15 that they're currently running. So I would, I would definitely pay for that. Um, but the problem that I foresee, um, like you said, we're in a transition and, you know, cable packages are pretty expensive, but now we have all these separate streaming packages coming from different companies. So like I pay for Netflix, I pay for Hulu, um, and I have like an HD antenna that I plug into my TV for local channels. And, you know, Netflix and Hulu is eight, nine bucks a month. But once people start, you know, providing these television shows, um, you know, you know, separate yeah it may it may add up um on the streaming side so it there's got to be some type of balance and i see i could see people paying almost the same amount um but i guess the benefit would be that they have an in- instant access versus having to watch it live yeah so what uh before i let you go what are your main concerns going forward i mean obviously reliability that's a big one um w- w- what else i mean are you are you optimistic or pessimistic about this? I'm, I'm optimistic because HBO is doing something that everyone's afraid to do. Yeah. And that's to step out and offer their service to the customers free from the cable co- companies, which is a little ironic because Time Warner Cable does own HBO. Yeah. And, you know, Isn't that funny? It, yeah. I find, that, I find that a little odd, um, but I guess, you know, they're going to get your money either way. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is, is that, how smart were they to, 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 to make that deal? You know, you have to believe that, you know, more and more. And I think, I think the, the, we've talked about this, not on this show, because uh, this is a new show, but years ago when house of cards first came out, you think about how big of a deal it was to get somebody like Kevin Spacey and to get the production value and the quality and the great writing and everything that goes into, to making a show like that a reality and that it went, right to Netflix, all episodes at once, you know, that is the future without anybody who's fighting against that. Anybody who thinks that that's not the way that we want to consume stuff, they're, they're in for a big surprise. Um, I'm not sure that, that releasing all of the episodes at once will be the, the thing, but a direct to, you know, a direct release that goes right out to to people and they can watch it right there. They don't have to go anywhere. They don't have to do anything. Uh, they don't have to w- w- deal with commercials. They're willing to pay for their content. Uh, that That's absolutely the the future of this stuff. Now, Joe, you're, you're working on your own uh, mini series. that's going to going to be featured on Netflix. Can you tell me a little bit about that? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a spinoff of House of Cards. Okay. So I can't say much more. I mean, it, you were saying it, it's uh, it's kind of a predecessor to House of Cards, so that it it takes place, 
in the years as Frank was uh, was growing up and and uh, had his first experiences with politics coming up in in the political. I mean, I know you asked me not to go into too much detail, but yeah, there's a big NDA I signed. I okay. can't really can't really talk much about okay. it. No, I get it. So if people want to read more of your stuff, you're you're very you've got a very active uh, website. Yeah, I've been trying to write a lot more. I love it, and I'm I'm glad to see it. Um, Thank you. It's uh, you're gonna have to spell your last name. It's Joe Coyote, J O E C A I A T I dot info. And he's saying Correct. it right, right? <laughs> you are, you are, Yay. and that's that is huge because that my name has been butchered in many different ways. And you have a podcast, Diagnostics and Usage. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's tech and Apple focused, you know, no big surprises there. Um, but I have a great co-host who's, a uh, who's in this, you know, Silicon Valley area. He's got great insights. Are you using the Meerkat? Are you going to be streaming yourself on, uh, on Meerkat a lot? Is that something that you'll be doing? I'm thinking about it right now. I've seen a couple of Meerkats, but I haven't actually, you know, put out a live stream. You know, yeah. I like adopting early technology, but yeah. I don't know if anyone's going to be really interested in, you know, maybe if I'm at a concert or an event, that's right. probably the use case that I could see myself using it. Yeah. Pretty cool. Well, listen, thanks for being here. And you're on, you're on Twitter. You're at Joe Coyote. Correct. And you're the one that made the little Santa hats. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. I actually, they're archived right now in my Dropbox. So next year comes around. I'm just going to, I'm just going to start tweeting everyone like crazy. So what Joe did is he, he went and took people's avatars and he, uh, he, he around put, Christmas time. Around Christmas time, put mm -hmm. the little little ass custom Santa hats on them all. Yeah, I hope I didn't. I hope I didn't uh, make Darth mad at me because he's usually the one in charge of that. No, no, I think you did good. I don't think anyone <laughs> anyone's going to be upset at you. It's me, but I'm not because <laughs> you didn't have a, a menorah hat for me. <laughs> next anyway, year. I'm next year. You. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying you, you want to you know embrace everything, Kwanzaa, absolutely everything. So do you know? Something with a menorah. I'm just throwing the idea out there. You're gonna maybe have to a sweater. Them. Sweater. Oh big, yeah, big bigfoot, bigfoot sweater. Yeah, I'll have to do a 2.0 series next there year. There you go. All right, thanks for being here, Joe. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan Hattie. All right. Bye. 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 So let me give you guys a, a preview of what's going to be in store for you next week, starting Monday, uh, Monday through Friday, probably. At, what, this is the thing I alluded to at the beginning of the show, Hattie. Mm -hmm. Some of the, the big shows, they don't do a Friday show. But why, Dan? The reason that they don't do a Friday show is be, that, that the, and so this is what I want to hear from, from all of you guys. You've got to hit me up on Twitter. Your opinion counts. I'm at Dan Benjamin on Twitter. A lot of them will do a Monday through Thursday show and they won't do a Friday show. The reason they don't do a Friday show is they feel that there are not enough live listeners and there are not enough listeners, period. That what will happen is we'll do this show. We'll edit it, release it. No one will hear it. Right, because everybody's like, you know what? It's Friday. I'm going to go get dinner. I'm going to go, you know, see a movie. That everyone's That's people's fun night. And then they don't listen to it over the weekend because they're not caring about podcasts over the weekend. They're busy with friends. They're yep. laying, laying around in bed. <laughs> and then by the time Monday comes around, they're like, I don't even want to listen to the they're one that came out Friday. Show. I'm going to listen to Monday's show. Friday's is already old. So the numbers on the Friday shows are lower. The numbers on the Friday, you would think the Friday is the big show. It's Thursday that's the big show. So that's the reason that people have been telling me, Dan, don't even do a Friday show. The other, the, the counter to that is, this show is for geeks, right? I mean, I'm a geek. Hattie is definitely a geek. I am a geek, yeah. And our audience is full of geeks. And these people have plenty of time on Friday nights and weekends. Yep. And you know what? Nothing wrong with that. Uh they're in front of the computer on Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays anyway. And they want to listen. And because we're their dear friends, please do a show on, uh, on Fridays. So we have something to, to do and to listen to so that, that I want to hear from you and we'll do a little poll. Yep. Uh, it could be an informal poll. Maybe I'll even do a poll on poll daddy, but follow me on Twitter at Dan Benjamin and let me know there if, uh, if you think that the show uh, we should do Monday through Thursday or Monday through Friday. I'd like to know. And we're, I'm up in the air about it. But starting Monday with the special Apple show, uh, we'll be there. So stay tuned for announcements about that. Thanks, everybody, for, uh, for tuning in today. I appreciate it. And uh, have a great weekend. And we will be back on Monday. So thank you. Bye. Bye.
and we're still live. I don't, you know, we got to sign up, yeah. but I'm going to hit stop on this audio. And then I'll hit stop on the video. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Have a wonderful weekend. Oh, before I go, what do you think? What do you think this, uh, this boom? I think it looks awesome. I used to have this, this is the inside baseball stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, it looked more like what mine, it looked, actually it, it is. It's very similar to the, the boom that Hattie had, yeah, has. It's a, it's a you know. It's a, yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was coming out of the front of the desk here going up like this. And it killed a lot of the desk space, and it made it so like I'm, I'm next week. I'm getting these monitors that are going to go across the desk. You're super across, excited about yeah. that. Yeah, they're going to be out of frame mostly, uh, and they're going to be going straight across. So that instead of having to try and keep switching things, all everything right here, right across, it's going to be perfect. But we, we didn't talk about uh, Harrison Ford and his plane crash. Well, I don't want to draw attention to the negativity. That's true. Well, let's find out if he's okay. I mean, I'm not, you know. I need to check up on that. Yeah. Anyway. Your mic. Well, now, now I'm thinking about Harrison Ford. I'm <laughs> talk about it. I'm a little bummed out now. Don't be bummed. I don't know why you brought that up. Because I'm a little upset. Anyway. Uh, so what we did is we put it on uh, this. I forget what that stand is called. It is, it is a mic stand. It's very, very heavy desktop Extra mic heavy stand. bottom. And we've got that set up, and it, it, it seems to be working great, really great. I find I'm going forward on it a little bit instead of being back from it a little bit. Is that just because of the angle that it's I don't know. leaning backwards? No, I know. It's, I'm just going to get used to it. I'm so used to being with a regular boom where it's hanging down a right, right, at, at, where it's uh, kind of in your space yeah. and that you have to go to it this I, well i i've actually not i got to go to it less than i'm going to it. anyway that's it thanks everybody for tuning in keep the feedback coming support us on patreon and we love you bye hattie bye